All right. Well, good morning, uh, commissioners and, and commission. Um, we're here today, Thursday, January 30th, 2024, special commission meeting. Laura, would you call the roll? Commissioner Curran. Here. Commissioner Floyd. Yes. Commissioner Harper. Yes. Commissioner Miletus. Yes. Chair Rosenbaum. Yes. Commissioner Raval. Uh, thank you, Laura. We have a quorum. Uh, we'd like to have the first compliance uh, issued ratification of commission of stipulated settlement agreements. Uh, Nicole Mitchell. Good morning. Good morning, Chair Rosenbaum, commissioners. For the record, I'm Nicole Mitchell from the Administrative Policy and Process, here to present one stipulated settlement agreement for marijuana violations. Also with me here today is to help answer any questions you may have is TJ Sheehy, manager of the Marijuana Technical Unit. Thank you, Nicole. If you go ahead and give us a synopsis. So investigation into these violations arose in the wake of the October 2019 ban on flavored cannabinoid vapor products, which was halted by the stay by a stay on the agency's emergency rules in November of 2019. Inspection of licensees mix log, which contained a list of products and the terpenes used to make them, revealed that the labels of thousands of its products failed to include botanically derived terpenes and or medium chain triglyceride, or MCT oil, as an ingredient. Instead, these labels incorrectly listed cannabis derived terpenes as an ingredient, which would be classified as unflavored products not subject to the ban. Because the labels failed to include correct ingredients, retailers and consumers would not know that these products were subject to the temporary ban. Licensee attributes this to a lack of product oversight, which OLCC ultimately determined was unintentional. The dishonest conduct violation pertains to licensees, representations to the public, and other licensees that the products at issue were made with only cannabis-derived terpenes. Licensee has since recalled the mislabeled products and revised its standard operation procedures. Uh, thank you, Nicole. Uh, Chair, I would like to recognize that Commissioner uh, Marvin Raval uh, is here on the DS and also recognize that Commissioner Q. Pollack has uh, permission not to be on the phone today. Um, um, Executive Director Marks, would you like to add anything? Um, I will briefly, I just want the Commission to understand that in late fall we were working this uh, obvious violation as uh, it needs to be settled in order for the Caroleaf merger to occur. Um, Amy Margolis did talk to me and accept, uh, uh, expressed at the end of, I think, December at some point that um, they would be interested in fully settling what you're considering here, uh, these violations and accepting full responsibility. After the end of the year, when it became clear to me that this wasn't going to result in charges that took their license potentially, um, I prioritized our work uh, in early January uh, for the investigation to get completed. That was substantially done in December of the last year that they would finish the report, you know, cross the T's on that, dot the I's on the charging issues, and then uh, with the settlement non-standard, I was involved in working with the settlement directly. Are there any questions from the commissioners? Yeah. Chair Rosenbaum, any questions? No, I'm fine, thank you. Um, we need to have a motion. Chair. Commissioner Harper. And uh, Commissioner Floyd. 
Uh, I move to ratify the stipulated settlement agreement for Kira <coughs> CS LLC as proposed by staff. Lower call roll. Commissioner Kern. Yes. Commissioner Floyd? Yes. Commissioner Harper? Yes. Commissioner Miletus? Yes. Commissioner Revolt? Yes. Chair Rosenbaum? <coughs> yes. Motion passes. Thank you, uh, Nicole. Thank you, TJ. Thank you, um, prior, prior to moving on, or would you like to share? Yeah, again? no, I, uh, I, uh, I know that. And, and call on uh, Commissioner uh, Miletus. Absolutely. Uh, I and Executive Director Marks touched on it. I know this was an extremely complicated matter, um, and uh, I want to uh, thank the staff and um, the executives of the agency for, for kind of guiding everybody through this. I, I know that there's a lot of things to consider in this transaction. Um, the violation wasn't a cancelable, cancelable offense, and... Um, I, I'll have more to say uh, uh, following the meeting, but I think in terms of our actions that we just made, I think it was the right decision in a complicated case that uh, will have uh, uh, great benefit to the industry as a whole. Thank you. And we have another issue in rules. We have staff recommendations uh, to discuss uh, the definition of milk and milk products. I'd like to have uh, Emily and uh, Becky Bopel come to the floor. And thank you both. Good morning, um, commissioners. Um, for the record, my name is Emily Feblis, and I'm the rules coordinator for the Oregon Liquor Control Commission. Today, I have one initial action for your consideration. Under tab A, you'll find the definition of milk and milk products action. During the process of amending Division 20 to incorporate legislative changes, technical changes were made to clarify the terms milk and plant-based milk. Commission staff have since learned that the implementation of um, rules based on these definitions will be challenging for our industry partners to implement. Thank you, Emily. And Becky, would you like to address the, the issue also? Well, I'm Becky Volko with the Bottle Mill Program. Um, I just reiterate that um, the industry partners were along with us, along with the ride of uh, rulemaking, and only after commissioners approved the um, the rules that, that made them final, they realized that there were going to be some issues with implementing it. So we're trying to, to work with our industry partners to um, make it work for everybody. Thank you. Are there any questions from the commissioners? Just a comment. I think, you know, across all the sectors of all the industries and segments of the industries we work with, that seems to be a, a common refrain. And I think it's uh, it's commendable that the agency was was willing to you know, take the position and, and go back and, and look at, at our things. I know uh, just uh, in general, you know, we deal with it on the cannabis side or the alcohol side. The people don't realize until the rules are passed uh, that um, the the impact of it. And, uh, you know, this is another perfect example. Uh, it, and, it, and it really speaks to the need for our industry partners across all segments to be really engaged in the process and uh, as well as, as for the agency to work on um, – which they, which has, has, in my experience, been the case to really work on pushing those messages out, and uh, um, you know, it, it shows that this isn't just a cannabis issue or an alcohol issue or a recycling issue. It's, it's, it is an uh, issue across the whole thing. But uh, I thank you guys for for your diligence and taking the amended steps we've taken. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Malidis, and Director Chairman. Marks? Just uh, for the record, Steve Marks, um, one of reiterate a couple things there. One, Becky did exceptional work as usual with the RAC. The issues were not raised in the RAC. We had great cooperation with OBRC. Grocers were at the table. It was subsequent to our promulgation of the rule that the parent implementations, our primary partner that carries this out, OBRC, was having uh, in the marketplace. And, uh, of course, the grocers were a, a bit... Uh, uh, upset with the lack of what they thought was workability of this. <coughs> so this gives us an opportunity to resend the rule uh, at a permanent, and this is a permanent rulemaking, um, and then revisit it with the partners as we go forward. But this was an issue we don't implement out there. We enforce the implementation, and it became clear that um, 
it was unworkable at this point for OBRC. So we're asked to take this step. Um, I think we'll have to look at it again in the future. Certainly hope uh, we do and that our partners work with us to get it right. Thank you. Um, need someone to call a... Uh, okay. Chair, I move to initiate rulemaking on these matters and to hold a rulemaking hearing at staff's discretion. Thank you, Commissioner Floyd. Commissioner Hello. Curran? Yes. Commissioner Floyd? Yes. Commissioner Harper? Yes. Commissioner Miletus? Yes. Commissioner Raval? Yes. Chair Rosenbaum? Yes. Motion passed. Um, administration, are there some information that the administration would like to deliver to the commission? Is there any commissioner's feedback in regards to any OLCC business today? Uh, just to kind of uh, reiterate, I, I think it's really important to, again, thank staff. I know uh, for, uh, in particular for this uh, Cura transaction, I know what a complicated uh, piece of hard work it was. I would imagine, you know, just uh, having some uh, ancillary knowledge of it, this was one, probably one of the largest transactions that the agency has ever presided over. It's a significant one. I think it was complex. I think there was... A lot of uh, a lot of things at stake here. Um, a lot of, uh, from my understanding, this uh, uh, entity employs hundreds of, of living wage uh, employees, uh, all with benefits. The capital stays in Oregon, creates Oregon jobs. Um, I I think it was um, as we've all evolved in this market and in the industry. It's it's been important to be constantly in touch with industry and to realize you know that the, the it's a it's a collaboration between the agency the industry and uh, it, its players and and you know this group will hopefully go on to do great things be a great corporate citizen here in Oregon um, I think the other thing that this does is really shows that um, the industry itself has, has struggled the the Markets have not been kind to some of the uh, publicly traded cannabis businesses, and I think a lot of that is concern over regulation. And I believe what this action uh, that we're, uh, we've started the process on taking really kind of demonstrates that the regulatory system works. We are getting it right, and we're working hard to work with our industry partners. So, again, I, I commend uh, executive staff. I commend the entire team here for their hard work in, in, in getting this over the goal line. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Malias. Commissioner uh, Rosenbaum, um, any any final yes. words? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Curran? I'm fine, All thank right. you. Any other comments from the commissioners here? Chair, I have one. Yesterday I was attending what's known as the gathering which is a meeting of the affiliated tribes in the Northwest. There's about 40 tribes. One of the topics, a very important topics, uh, dealt with the new farm bill as it relates to him. An issue has, has arisen that uh, I spoke of last meeting where a number of the major community banks in Oregon are now threatening businesses who do business with the industrial hemp market. And by that I mean... If you're a hairdresser and you're doing business with an industrial farmer, or if you're an advertising agency and you are then marketing with that product, or if you are even an insurance agent trying to insure crop insurance, which, by the way, the USDA has notified everyone in America that they will have crop insurance for the 2020 crop. There's no one who will sell it to them because they have told those companies that if you do this, we will take your bank account away from you. So we have partners out there that um, really don't play well in the sandbox. These banks have to move forward quickly because that crop will go into the ground in May. And if they can't get crop insurance and something happens, then they're out of business. My perspective is that these organizations are really threatening the livelihood of what Oregon has, and that's small business. There are fewer than 1,000 employers in this state with 
over 500 employees. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of people with two foot, which, which are smaller than that. And they're afraid. They're not going to push back. So those of you who are here, uh, we need your help. We don't need a solution next year for the hemp industry. We need a solution now by May or there's going to be a lot of bankruptcies going on and it won't matter if this bank or that credit union pulls your account because you won't be in business. So I don't know what we can do as, as OLCC. I know some of our team members are reaching out to some of the, the public relation firms inside the financial in industry, but we have to move quickly to get some type of resolution here. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Lewall. And uh, before we adjourn, um, Executive Director Marks. Um, thank the commission for coming together at this special meeting. Uh, obviously, this is an interesting one. I, I want to put at least a couple things, I think, on the record about the settlement further here. The $100,000 cap that we utilized today was uh, negotiated and devised with AT&T in an application to another uh, licensee that we charged uh, previously. So we have uh, used the charge before. This is the first settlement that has been placed in. Um, should be a discussion in the future about is that cap at the right level? Does it serve the system well? Uh, but we did cap that authority we got on uh, civil penalties at the $100,000. Um, we also converted the mandatory suspension that could have come with this to a, a financial penalty on one charge. So that was why it was limited to $10,000 $10, on that charge. Um, as we've looked at this, uh, these issues with you know the relationship to licensing a large public corporation, I think it's become clear that We've got to work on meshing our processes better uh, with that kind of corporation. And I think that's led to some thoughts and issues here that we need to explore to uh, improve the efficiencies of our licensing process. Uh, these aren't easy. No state's doing this particularly well. Um, but I'm proud of the work that our team did, both through the investigations and what they found along the way and what they made sure we consciously addressed. Uh, and uh, and how we got here. So thank the team and all the folks in licensing investigations for their work and you for taking this final action. Uh, thank you, Executive Director Marks. Um, I'd like to thank all the commissioners for being available and accessible for our special uh, commission meeting today, January 30th, 2020. And I'd like to call this meeting adjourned.